death be not proud. What's up, faggots? Today, and only today, we are going to paint some Warlord Games hoplites. And I'm going to show you a technique that you can use to kind of mass produce these guys to get a lot of them on the table really quick. Uh, in these videos, I don't know if I'm going to go with the uh, other camera that focuses on me and what I'm doing because I noticed that when I'm painting and some of the other thing and some of the other videos that I've made before this, prior to this one, I'm very subdued. I'm not as aggressive. Like I said, I'm more open to suggestion. I'm just. 100% focused on the miniature and giving you the instructions that you need. I'll probably keep this in here for one more video, see how it goes, but tell me your feedback in the in the comment section below. So, to start off, we start with a flat Army Painter Primer White. The first color we're going to use is good old Reichland Flesh Shade. We're going to give that a little shake and the reason why we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade is because it's the base coat for a lot of our, for our flesh, our bronze, and our leathers. And so we're going to use this very liberally all over the miniature. And uh, we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to go to Pound Town here. And you can see what I'm about to paint. And I've got some wash on here and we're just, oh, I didn't get enough. Let's dip that in there. There we go. And we're just going to go down the arms, the shaft of the spear, the crest of the helmet, inside the helmet, underneath where the neck is. And we're just going to really, by and large, wash the entire miniature with this Reichlin Flesh Shade. We're going to do the holster for the, for the scabbard here, the leather. And we're also going to do the handle. Anything that's not going to really be white is going to get the Reichlin Flesh Shade. So all of the flesh... Even the steel on the, uh, on the, what do you call it here, spear tip and everything, it's all going to get Reichlin Flesh Shade. And you want to make sure you get a nice liberal coat. This also provides a very decent foundation for your flesh. A very decent foundation for your flesh because once this stuff dries, um, the flesh tone that I'm going to be using will stick to it like a fly to shit. So we're going to go down the legs. We can get a little bit on the tunic if we want to. But I always try to paint two to three to a popsicle stick because hop lights have to be spray painted white in order for them to fully work and everything. And um, you just, the reason for that is it just, it makes it easier. Um, we are going to be doing some other things to the armor as you can see we don't have a very thick layer on the cuirass now if i had a cleaner whiter paint that i uh primer that i could use besides army painter i probably would all i would have to do is just wash it after everything is painted with just army painter paint everything first then do army painter and then highlight my white and i can use what's there but this is a good way too and uh, you can get a lot of these guys really quick and the whole thing about the Warlord line is uh, it's cheap, it's affordable, and they're pretty much, by and large, easy to fix. Uh, I, I'm going to have a link a lot of videos below that I've already you, talked to about Warlord Games and their hoplites. I like the kit. I kind of prefer these to the Vitrix. The Vitrix ones are a lot of work, so if you want to get into historical war gaming and you want to and you want to get a lot of hoplites and you want to do like let's say you want to do Athenians versus Spartans or uh, Spartans versus Thebans you can get a lot of a lot of these guys really quick if you just go with Warlord games I will tell you that the Macedonian Phalangite regiments they're a little bit different they're a little harder to paint uh, simply because they have that more detailed linen cuirass and everything but uh, you are still gonna use some of the same techniques here I will do um, a Macedonian phalangite and a vitrix painting tutorial as well, depending on how well this is received. So we're going to get all our wash on. We're going to make sure his legs are washed. We're just going to make sure that the wash for everything is heavy. You want it to be heavy on the arm, on the helmet, because this is going to basically build the foundation for your bronze and everything. And, uh, a lot of your other paints so we're just gonna make sure that we get it on the neck here and I'm using a Windsor Newton size 3 
And uh, this thing's seen better days. I've got to get some new paint brushes. So I'm doing some side jobs right now. Yes, I've got to spend like $250 on paint brushes. And I'm not happy about it. But in some cases, you are what you use. And I am one of those people who paint often enough that I can I can warrant the cost for that because it's something that I'm going to do anyway. Um, I, as a matter of fact, I'm most relaxed when I'm down here doing this stuff. So, there we go. Now we're going to focus on dirty water, cleaner water. We're going to focus on the leather straps. We're going to make sure that we get a little bit of the flesh wash on the leather straps too because that'll help the leather stick to it. It's just, it's basically your first base coat for everything that you do. Let me switch to a size one. And if I wanted to, I could build that white up with more white, but I have to, I have to apply washes and I have to apply a crap ton of other colors and everything. So we're just going to wash the strap, the central shoulder strap here, and we're also going to wash the neck. Get rid of that random hair. And it looks like I'm actually maintaining frame for once. And this is the big step for number one. We'll actually have to edit and come back once we uh, once we apply this wash because it will take a minute to dry. But we we will switch to shields. All right, and we're back. So I have some shields here, and I also have their base. Not to mention, I've got three other bases over here. Um, I, I did film another little video to this a uh, while ago. I was doing three at a time, but that turned out to be too long, too time consuming. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the shields ready. And for that, we're gonna use Vallejo Leather Brown, as you can see there, and we're gonna just apply some into our palette here that'll be enough and you basically paint the entire shield brown as quickly as possible the whole thing brown even the arm you, you, you as you can see here you've got the arm right there I am going to paint that but you're not going to be able to see a whole lot in here once this uh, goes on to the model as you can see here You've got the model, that's basically what you see. So I'm just going to be painting the part of the hand and the arm that I can see from there and the back of the arm. You don't really see much. Again, the shield, the hop, the hop law itself was a shield that covered about 60% of the body. So, you know, uh, Warlord did have the foresight to make those shields big and they did it for a reason so you can paint these guys really fast. So. We're just going to hurry up and we're going to, even if we get the paint all over our fingers, this is the dirty process. I could glue these to a popsicle stick, but then they wouldn't paint up right. It's just easier to paint one side of the shield real fast and then paint the other side of the shield real fast. And I can also use some of this brown to paint my, uh, to paint my bases as well real quick. But we just want to make sure we get the entire thing liberally painted so while we wait for that to dry we will paint up a base and this warlord base just it's a twofer so that because i figured if i paint five i might i, I might as well just paint five if i've already painted three and even though th these miniatures don't belong to me they belong to a friend of mine i'm sure if i ask him he'd pay me but it doesn't matter because i need subjects to do this video for you so don't get any ideas <laughs> So I can just use this leather brown as a good base because I'm gonna I'm gonna paint the whole thing again, but it might as well just uh, start building up color. I don't like to waste things that much. Now you find out why my table is so dirty. Here, I just smear brown paint all over my table, <laughs> especially when I'm painting bases and everything. It's no big deal. I bought this table for this purpose, so it doesn't matter how dirty it gets. I know that most people, most painters, use a very clean and neat scientific environment. Oh my, he's getting paint all over his table. He's, he paints like a kindergartner. Ah, what am I going to do? 
Boom. And then we can turn this guy around. And just get that painted off real quick. And I really do like the Vallejo Leather Brown for a lot of uses simply because everything it, it sticks to anything. You can also use this as a primer. You can also use it as a primer. But I need something to do while I paint the entire shield brown here. So I am in hoplite mode. Probably won't paint any more hoplites until I build the hypastis for the eBay sale that I'm going to do. That's if I decide to sell the stuff. Uh, my buddy the ranger is like, no, you can't sell that stuff. It's like trading a... It's like trading a Porsche for a convertible Mustang. You can't sell it. You got to keep it. And I'm like, I, I, I may just keep the stuff I was painting for an eBay sale. But again, this is kind of my year for the passive income. I want to get that built up, you know, take a commission here and there on somebody's ancient project and uh, make a little money for myself. Because if I make a little bit of money for myself, I can pay off the house. And then I can go be a greeter at Walmart and say, welcome to Walmart, bleep you, <laughs> and bleep your mother. Uh, or, welcome to Walmart, oh, I smell food stamps on you. <laughs> Why do you got to bring food stamps into my store? There we go. I'm kind of a chaotic artist. I'm, I'm organized, yet I'm not 100% precision. You know, the people who got this down to a science... I have my work area, and I make it work. I mean, this is this is my, uh, what do you call it, my Chinese paint station right here. You paint now. You paint now. Let's take a look how our wash is doing. Uh, I think it needs a few more minutes before it is ready. Maybe at least a minute or two. We've got a little bit of that stuff. Even you, puppy dog. Hey, you need to grow a sack. All right, so the next color we're going to use is Filthy Cape, and this is going to go all over the cuirass, all right? And then once we get past these first two stages, the cuirass, the washing of the cuirass, and the leather, and the washing of the leather, the model is going to kind of fly by relatively quickly. And I really like this color. It's just basically Dove Gray from the Citadel line, and it comes out pretty thin. You don't need to do a lot to it. But we are done with that color. That's about all we'll need from uh, the uh, Filthy Cape pot right there. I like to thin it down just a little bit more. I like this to go on very liberally, very quickly. And we're going to put this all over the cuirass. So I get rid of a little bit of that. And we're just gonna, yeah, we're going to go down the entire cuirass and even in there. And we're just going to work it on very quickly. And uh, you, want it, you want it to be thin, the thinner the better. But the reason why uh, we're, we're painting the cuirass gray is because we're going to wash it black. And I've noticed that uh, once you do that, the phantasma gray looks even more white as the highlight and if you want to you can mix the ceramite a very watered down ceramite with the phantasma gray and you can make yourself a better a better uh, what do you call it I'm, I'm at a loss for words here you can make yourself a better cuirass a better white cuirass or if you want to you can uh, you can use uh, bleach bone from the Citadel range. You can water that down and you can wash the cuirass with that. Then wash the entire thing black and build it back up. And you can do a cream color cuirass pretty easily. But we just get it all over the uh, two guys here. He's also, and it doesn't matter if you get it on the, uh, the tunic down here. We're just going to paint that blue. We do want to cover the entire cuirass here with this color. And a little bit more water, the thinner the better for this stuff. And uh, luckily this stuff is already kind of a thin paint, but it's a gray and it's very easy to work with. And again, you'll be able to get a lot of pop lights really quick. Damn. 
And if you wanted to paint these guys with the shield on, it would just, I think it would make it a lot harder. It would be a lot harder. This is kind of going on like a contrast paint. That's how thin I've got it, but it sticks to the white primer very, very, very well. And, and again, if it's not too thick, it, it will serve its purpose with relative ease. Chad's actually staying in frame today. <laughs> but yeah, if you want a hoplite army and you want to get it the fastest way possible, I've painted easily over easily over 300 hoplites very recently with uh, 2020 at the uh, beginning of 2020 and then the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. Again, I've just been doing I've done a ton of Greeks and I don't think that there's anybody at this point in the world right now who knows more about painting hoplites than me because I've done so many of them. I mean, I'm sure there are better painters than me, but getting a lot of these guys quick, getting them to be functional, getting them to look good, yeah, I think I think I got them beat on that one. I've just done so many of these guys. Because I did apply that very wet. And as you can see, I started with the shield like that. I just put the gold in there around the arm and I left the arm brown. And um, I did this one, so I'm just going to grab one full side of the shield here. Dust that off. We're just going to go back to the retributor. Here, and we're going to... I always try to keep work moving whenever I can. We're not going to use a good brush on that. We're going to use this brush. We're going to use a crappy Chinese Wanjing brush for the metallic and everything because it's big too I like a big brush for the big shield and we're just going to brush with the wet edge as much of the shield as we can and we're just gonna take that around just like that so, and that's how I do the and that's how I do the shield and then once you apply a second coat to do the other side it usually evens off and it looks and it looks more like a bronze color once you wash it so that can go there. Let me get a little bit more of this stuff out. And this is what we're also going to do our greaves and helmet with as well. So I want to grab that at the end there. And I, I could spray spray paint these Retributor and save myself a lot of time. Again, it's just it's twenty five dollars for that fucking can. I can't help it. And you know I'm I'm supposed to not use the F word this year, but apparently I'm dropping F bombs all over my videos. I can't help myself. I try, I try America, I try. There we go. Just nice and wet like that, nothing special. As a matter of fact, that might, that's already ready. We will need Retributor close by. We're gonna switch back to Leather Brown. And uh, I think that much will do us. And this will probably be the end of our Leather Brown for a little while. We're gonna use this brush instead. Let's get a lot of that on there, but let's do our shoulder straps first. You just want a thick, heavy brown line through there. You'll maintain frame, Chad. Ah, oh, the pressure's on. The pressure's on. I can't do it. I can't do it. All eyes are on me and how I paint hoplites. And you're just basically, once you wash this black, everything else that you do around it will become the highlight. The strap and the scabbard are essentially your low lights. It's kind of like doing a crucifix. You paint everywhere around where the crucifix is going to be and then you draw the crucifix on the shield. I learned that the hard way, of course. So, down there deep. All right. Grab a little bit of water and do the whole sword and scabbard just like this. Lots of paint. 
And uh, the reason why I do, I, I don't want to just paint one of these, I want to paint two to three. Two to three every single time. That way the work just kind of gets done and can drag it everywhere I need to be and I, it's fewer brush strokes. You never want to work a mass army like an ancient's army as individuals. You never want to work them as individuals. If I get too much paint somewhere I can just keep taking from that spot like I did here. And I'll paint up the scabbard. The whole sword is going to be leather brown. <laughs> so, Nolan Oil, only time we're going to use this color. And then we really only have, after this color, two, four, six, eight. Eight colors. That's not including the two we're going to, the three that we're going to use for the base, one of which we've already used. So, a brown's a brown most of the time. So, we're going to use Nolan Oil. I got my thing there to hold my wash that also holds it open and then let's see here yeah and the good thing about leather brown is it, it dries relatively quickly and then when you're not using coke and we're also going to do the uh what do you call it on here the, the scabbard itself and then we can highlight the scabbard just a little bit easier Need to use too much, but this will uh, this will build a nice little base on the Vitrix models and give it more of a uh, more of an outline where it, where it should be dark. You'll have more shading. And it also darkens your leather. But trust me, there is some method to my madness. It's already drying. We are going to get out a little bit of flesh tone, and we're just going to go to work on that arm. Now, this is a uh, a triad. You got rosy shadow, rosy skin, and rosy highlight. Those are the three from Reaper, and I do like the, a lot of the Reaper paints. If you thin those things down, they work really, really well. And we're just going to go to town, pound town on the arm in here. We're just going to get it all over the arm. That way we can wash it and be done with it. Let's get in there. Let's get in there nice and good like. And this is quite possibly the only layer of uh, flesh that you need to use. I might put one more little coat on it, but you don't need to highlight it, is what I'm saying, because you can't see it. You just want to make sure that you get the back of it and the front of it. As a matter of fact, I could technically stop right there if I wanted to, but we're going to do the whole thing up to the armband and everything. And, you know, that's already had some time to dry, but I'm doing the entire model today. Okay, that one went better than the last one. We are going to... Nice and neat. Because we can always come back to these three later and their three spheres. But we're only going to be doing two, so let's see here. We got some we got some leather brown out. Let's go through and just make sure our leather strap is there and present. We're not going to do any other ornamentation. We're just going to drag the leather around where the rope is. That way it looks a little bit neater. And again, you don't, there's only so much of this that you're going to see anyway. There's only so much of this that you're going to see. Alright, and 
then this shield is basically done. Do the same for the other one. Central armband and the leather. As a matter of fact, cool thing about the Hopla shield is we don't even know how they were built, and we wouldn't know how they were built and constructed unless uh, we, until we found uh, the, the tomb of King Philip of Macedon, and he had a bunch of shields that were intact, and we were able to see how the Greeks made these things for the first time. Really remarkable piece of equipment. It's about it's roughly about 20 pounds and you can hit people with it it'll block 60 percent of your body uh, there was a show called deadliest warrior they ran the numbers and uh the shield basically allowed the spartan to beat the samurai now why is that true in in swordsmanship there are only nine targets that you can use at any given time and no matter where you swing it's always going to be one of the nine targets that shield and the helmet Take six of those targets away. Instantly. You're missing six of your targets. Now the Samurai is on the defensive because he's got to use his one offensive sword as a defensive weapon. And, you know, so basically, it's like fighting a Celt because you're going to swing down. I'm going to catch it on my shield. I'm going to thrust in and you're dead. You know. And that's the, the whole point of having a shield. And that's why Romans hurl pylum to get rid of shields most of the time. All right, let's see if we are dry. All right, and we are back. We're going to go back to Retributor, and this is where the model's really going to start taking off on us now that all the washing and base building is done. And we're going to do the uh, bronze of the model. That's Greaves, that's the sword, that's the pummel of the sword, not to mention the, uh, the helmets themselves. And they're all going to get the Retributor treatment. And... We're gonna switch back to our large brush for this so that it goes just a little bit faster or quicker, whichever one you want to do. And uh, we're just gonna start going for every bit of the bronze. The sword tip here, even the uh, because you don't have to paint everything. Again, that shield is going to cover a lot, but we are going to do it this way simply because it's just how it's done. And Go for the greaves, you go for the helmet, you get the whole kit and caboodle done as quickly as possible. And you want to be careful with some of these helmets because you can clog the details on the parts of the face that you can see and everything. And you don't really want that. Alright, that almost takes care of the swords. We, while we've got the leather brown out, we might as well um, do the shoulder strap again and everything and just highlight that because we are going to have to wash this color in. So you just need to take a quick line down each of the shoulder straps. And that'll just kind of make the, the leather brown pop just a little bit more. So we've eliminated six colors and we are down to the final five. Let's uh let's go ahead and do blue. Oh, the, the final six. We're just using Vallejo Prussian blue. Couple of drops of that, and we are going to thin that down with some water. And we're going to get our, our 
trusty Gadzooks War Gaming brush out. And use that, just a cheapy. And we're going to do the blue and the horsehair crests. also have to do around the sleeve. Just going to paint the parts of the model that are blue, and uh, when we use our next blue color, it's going to really just go up one full shade. We got to change brushes and do the sleeve real fast. Every hoplite has a nice sleeve right there, as you can see. first before you paint the flesh on. That way you can clean it back up with the flesh. But yeah, the warlords, I, I'd say if you they're your go-to if you want to get like 80 hop 80 to 100 hoplites on the field in relatively easy amounts of time. Yeah, use the Warlord. Vitrix are too time consuming. The only thing I don't like about the Warlord is they're not, none of them are wearing, none of them are wearing sandals. None of them are wearing sandals. Great to Rosy Shadow, and you're gonna see what Rosy Shadow does to this, uh, to this Reichlin flesh shade. colors in. Let's start with the faces on these guys. Um, with this guy we can only just really see his neck so that's the one precision part that we got to do there. We can just really only see his neck and that's all we've got to touch on him. Same with this guy. We gotta do his neck, and that's why we wash it with the Reichland flesh shade because this stuff is like a magnet for flesh shade. This guy, we can see his face. I don't know how well that's gonna register. And yeah, that's about as good as it's gonna get. So, next. Search for other parts of the neck. Make right up in there. And right up in there. Do his mouth, and that's about the only part of his face that you can see. on this old on these old homeboys all right here we go let's just start with the legs 
too much, too much. Anywhere you got the blue color or the gold hanging out is also a really good place to get it. Because we've still got one more wash that we've got to put these guys through before we finish them off. That's the end of the flesh town. The next color we have up here, and these are just going to go really, really quick, is Reaper True Blue. This kind of complements the uh, horsehair crest and everything really, really well. Plus, when you wash it, it kind of uh, it kind of darkens up really well, but it'll still leave it one shade lighter. Look at that! Bam. It's all just going to fall into place now. A little water on our brush, get a little bit of this blue, and a little bit of the Prussian. We are going to mix a little bit of Prussian into that because it will make it stick better. And it's more like a uh, 3 to 1, 4 to 1. like this kind of blue is because it's not as intense as ice blue from uh, the, the Army Painter range or the old Citadel range. I never really moved on from the na names of the Citadel paints and everything. I just sort of find what works and what glides on as quickly as possible. get somewhere and these guys are starting to get some semblance of uh, humanity going. There is another, uh, there's a deep sky Vallejo color that you can get but I prefer true blue. Deep sky would probably be a lot better. Leaves are done, and if we wanted to, we could paint these strings blue, but we'll wait until uh, we're done with the wash to do that because we still got to paint the cuirass. All right, so that's all our blue. Next, we're going to go with Zandri Dust from the Citadel range. Shake that up real fast. We're going to use a, a flat brush for this part, and all we're going to do is paint the shafts of the spears real quick and uh, that that uh, what do you call it color the Reichland flesh shade provides a very very good base for the Xandri dust to go on it just sort of hugs the model and again can't stress how much I like god damn it how many times do I have to cut this stupid thing to keep there, there we go bam and the reason why you want to use a flat brush is because it'll help you just do one whole side of the spear 
a lot faster than just taking a normal brush and trying to do each individual end. So a small flat brush works best for shafts. And we have literally worked our way through the 10th color. And you always want to keep your uh, color palette below 20 for every model that you paint. Below 20. Well below 20. And that's not including the three base colors. Like, the base is kind of its own model. But next we're going to go and we're going to do the... We're going to do the hair of these guys. Some of these guys got hair coming out from underneath their helmet. And we're going to use... Uh, Vallejo Air Black. I'm just going to get a couple of drops in this pot here. And we're all, and because they're Mediterranean, they can just have black hair. Or some of them can have blonde hair, it doesn't really matter. And if I wanted to do blonde hair, I'd just use Zandri Dust mixed with white. And we're going to use a little bit of Necromancer Cloak. So already, we've worked our way through 12 colors. We're going to get our Windsor size 1. And we're going to make sure we got a little bit of both. One is thinner than the other. You can see right here that this guy's got a little bit of black hair coming out. And we're just going to do that up real quick. Same with this guy. Again, it's a bit of a design flaw. But we're also going to blacken that up. Down. Put the black line right there. Put the black line right there. Stay in frame. Stay in frame. Okay, black hair is done. We're going to grab a little bit of our uh, Phantasma Gray and just touch that up around where the hair touched the cuirass. We're not quite ready for the color. can't really see where I'm at, but I can imply that I'm just getting close to the neck, the nape of the neck here, where right in there, perfect. Is Chainmail Air by Vallejo, again. Now I really enjoy this color, it's one of my favorite metallics. As a matter of fact, it's mostly my primary metallic. I don't use anything else because most of the time I just have to either do a spear tip or I have to do a long sword or I have to do some barding and it just, it strokes on. It glides on, it sticks, it works immediately and it does what I need it to do immediately. So. I mean, you're, you're going to see this stuff in action right here. I'm just going to go down one side of each spear tip. And I use a nice big brush to get this done quickly. Each guy has a brooch on the middle of their uh, cuirass. We're also going to paint that silver. And there you go, the brooches are done. Don't know how well you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see it a little bit better when uh, we go to the final stage. So, so far, 
we worked our way through 16 colors. The 18th color is Army Strong Tone, and the 19th color is Phantasma. And that's for the entire miniature. One, two, three. One, two, three. Um, that's six drops. That's three drops per miniature with a drop of water for each, for every three drops. So if I had five miniatures, that would be, if I had three, that's nine plus three drops of water. It's a three to one ratio on there. And then uh, let's get a good wash brush going. We'll switch back to our our Windsor here. God damn it. There we go. And uh, we're going to wash the entirety of the miniature again. And then we're going to finish them. And this also uh, makes the flesh a little bit more ruddy, makes it dirty, makes their feet dirty, and um, does up the spears, does all your shading, and this is one of those few few models that I use uh, more than one wash on out there. It's not a Citadel model, so it doesn't it doesn't have its own little surface area for every single part. I bought some orc mega knobs from walmart.com. That's right, when I need 40k models, I'll just get it from walmart.com because there's no reason to leave the house. Save money, live better, walmart.com. Hell yeah. <laughs> and there is a little bit of method to my madness here. There we go. Boom. That on the bronze. Or the retributor, and it'll t and this color will turn your retributor into bronze, I should say. All right, now that our wash has had a minute to dry and everything, and it's all nice and ready for us, all we're gonna do now is finish the white on the model. We're gonna take a little bit of a uh, touch-up leather brown, and uh, the one I go for is Phantasma Gray or Ghost Gray. I I like Phantasma. It's a good name, Phantasma. But we're going to go for this color. And this is one that you want to kind of water down. And it just gives you a really good off-white. And we're going to go and we're going to do the, the harder parts of the body first. So right up here next to the shoulder pad, like that. Take the back here. It spreads on really easily, and it, and it really, I really like this stuff because it just hugs the model really well. going to work away from the leather strap. Plus it glides on, and that's what makes this a good color. 
And if you want to dirty it up, you can use a little bit of soft tone wash. Each one of those little, uh, I don't know what those call, the flaps, the crotch flaps, I call them the, the crotch flaps. You can build each one of those up really quite nicely. That's not quite the point. We're just going to work our way away from the leather. And you might need one or two applications in every area, but we're going to hurry up and There we go. Bam. That works pretty good too. And you don't have to get so close up in there. You do have to do this though because you can see it with the shield on. You see how quickly that layers up, though. It's good stuff. You don't really need to worry too much about the, uh, the whiteness right there because, again, the shield's going to cover a great deal of this model, as you know. But we are going to make sure that we cover some of it. basically what you call the home stretch here. Phantasma Gray is the last uh, color to go on. Let's get a bigger brush and get this over with. It's going to drop a water. little pleats here. And it doesn't really take too long to do two of them up. You could do two of these guys a night. That's 14 guys a week. In two weeks, you got over 24 guys for a unit. And you already started on the second unit, technically. But that's if you do two guys a week. I mean, two guys a night. You ain't going to go anywhere just doing two guys a week, I'll tell you that much now. 
not with the numbers demanding for some of the historical systems. Like Kings of War is uh, historical kind of sucks because it demands high numbers. You know, nobody wants to paint a horde of hoplites. You know, somebody would ra I would rather paint two units of 24 than two hordes. But everything I do is in groups of 40 anyway because I believe that in Hail Caesar it's better if the hoplite units are large units instead of standard units. That way they got more stanima. They're a little bit harder to crack, but they're also less maneuverable. So it kind of sticks to a little bit more historical accuracy. And uh, those are just white glued onto the popsicle sticks. And I'm using 20 millimeter bases. Of course, it immediately t sticks to the fucking thing there. Come on, nothing's easy, is it? Want a dot of super glue, not the whole bottle. Thank you. You're always gonna gotta think about how these guys are gonna rank up. Just a little bit here. There we go. That'll work. You lend themselves to that very well. We're back, and this is the last portion of the uh, painting process for these hoplites that I'm doing. We're going to take some charred brown. I always call it scorch brown. I never moved on from the Citadel from the Citadel game range color, so deal with it there. Good news is this stuff. Uh, once you have uh, applied your thick Russian mud, this scorch brown color, it really does stick to it like a fly to shit. And, it requires very little effort. So we're gonna hurry up. We're gonna use like one drop of water on that. And uh, it doesn't matter what brush you use and stuff like that, but we are gonna hurry up and try to get this done. Let's do the two for, oh, we got two stuck together. Ah, gotcha. And uh, I usually like to kind of start at the feet and work my way out and away, but you can see just how well you get coverage just from like one little dot of paint. It's also a good idea to go over the borders again, even though I went over it with leather brown. Leather brown is just a good primer for everything, um, even flesh tones, other leathers, whatever you want to do. Leather brown, it works out. There. And wherever there isn't texture, that's where we're going to apply our Elmer's glue. You can see we didn't get a lot of brown right there, but. I like a nice little chocolate bar, that's what I call it. Nice little chocolate bar when I'm doing basing on fantasy or ancients. I just like a nice straight little chocolate bar and we're gonna go with it. And you don't need to see what I'm doing. I mean, I technically don't even need to do this step. I just need to tell you what color to do it because if you can't paint the bases of your miniatures, get the fuck out of the hobby. We don't want your kind around here. I mean, you could stop with the Russian mud, but it's way too dark. That's the problem with Russian mud. It's just way too dark. But once you paint it brown, it's just, it, it gets way better. And voila, we are off to our last two steps, which is all dry brushing. I actually, for basing, I actually recommend 
Like if you want to just do basing really, really, really quickly. Where's my trusty? I don't have that color out. Oh, there it is. I just do everything vomit browned on top of the sand and then I summer grass it. That's how a lot of my orcs were done. That's how a lot of things are done. If you want an alternate, one that I use a lot is everything is done codex gray. And I don't use this this often. Codex gray and then just a quick dry brush of men off white is also good. Or over the codex gray, tanned earth. For smaller things, I'll just go with the tanned earth highlight, like on smaller miniatures that I might be painting or may or may not be painting very soon here on the channel. We're back, so we are going to start with Codex Gray all over with the bases. It's the good first highlight color, so we're going to get that. I keep this very thin too. It's a multi-purpose color. You might actually need a little bit. That might be perfect. And what I do is I get it all over the brush. Wipe it off the brush. You know how this goes. You know how a dry brush works. If you don't know, if you can't figure out how a dry brush works, get out of the hobby. We don't want your kind round here. I'm just kidding. You have to be told that dry brushing exists. I mean, so many miniatures could be saved if people just knew how to dry brush. Right off the bat. Like so many. And I do want some of that to come through. Of course there's a hair. And as I become more acclimated to my setup, um, maybe I'll be less tired as I work through it. I was more concentrated on my work this project. The easier it is for me. The easier the project, the easier it is for me to uh, talk to you, the viewer. I just want to wondering what the hell is all over my grubby hands today it's like I washed them before I came down here I guess that's not good enough and this is actually pretty good we're gonna have two that are ready. Two of the bases that we need to do. I do like bigger bases. It comes in, this comes in handier on bigger bases, like four, to, four guys to a base or something like that. Next, we got the easy part. I'm just gonna get a little bit of glue here. And we can finish this all off at once. There should be more than enough for all of that crap. All right, now I've gotta excuse myself from the table. Let's grab some Elmers. Put that there. And we are going to kind of apply that right next to the foot there in a tuft. Should be more than enough for him. a little bit. Now comes the easy part. I like to use the lighter. For some reason, the lighter works the best. 
for getting that stuff off. Don't ask me why. It's because you can flick your bick at it. Well, it looks like we still got two mud puddles, we made it too, too wet, but we do have a full four hoplites, 100% finished there, and um, let's just get a 360 of one of these guys, boom. You can see he's very white, very blue, um, he's got a sausage for an arm because he's a warlord miniature and they don't believe in biceps over there. He's got black hair, look, kind of looks like Mo Howard, and uh, he's nothing too special to ring home about. He's just a common soldier. And uh, the thing I really like about the Warlords, again, are the spear hands. If I want to fix this, I can cut it off at both ends, one and two, and put a metal one right in, and I'm good to go. Or I could just cut off the arm completely and start again. That's the advantage to the Warlord ones. You can actually repair these, I'm going to say, at least five times easier than you can the Vitrix ones. In any case, as you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But until I see you again, keep watching, keep playing, and keep painting, my friends. And we'll see you in the next one. Even you, puppy dog. Hey, you need to grow a sack!